soybean lodging. It's one of the things that, you know, you think about corn lodging, wheat lodging. We don't talk maybe as much about soybean lodging as we should, but you got to take a look at the stems, check your soybean plants out, and what's wrong with the stem? Is it too thin? Is there disease? What's going on? So what do you think most of the time, Darren? Well, I'll say this. With soybeans in general across our country, where we're really falling down is with fertility. We just are not fertilizing that soybean crop enough, and it's so obvious when you look at guys that are getting 80, 90, 100 bushel beans, and you ask them, what are you doing? How are you getting 100 bushel beans? Well, they say, we're just fertilizing. That's all we're doing. We're trying to feed the crop for this big yield, and that's the huge difference. Now, are there disease issues? Absolutely. There's more disease issues each year, it seems like, uh, and yes, that definitely comes into play. Yeah, but hey, let's talk, let's talk about why we have some of those disease issues. I think it still comes back to fertility exactly like you're talking about. If you're shorting your plants, and uh, let's be honest, when you look around the country, the average soybean farmer is hardly fertilizing his soybeans, yet expecting a great crop. Okay, you're not feeding the plant, and yes, it's absolutely going to be more likely to get disease then. All right, so let's just start right from the beginning, seed treatment usage. This is one uh, that, in, let's just face it, in 2016, a lot of guys were cutting. Guys were looking at, man, I just can't afford to spend that much money. Maybe I'll cut the insecticide off my seed treatment, or maybe I'll just cut that seed treatment out completely because, hey, I'm planting later, soils are dry, it's warm, maybe I'll be okay. We saw more disease issues this year than we have in a number of years, whether it was Pythium, Phytophthora issues. We're seeing some sudden death now that started off as a Fusarium infection early in the season. I mean, there's a lot of things going into play here uh, with that soybean early getting developed, uh, getting that root system established. And, and a lot of those come up the stalk and they're going to start showing themselves once we get into a stressful time. So we get into some of the heat in the summer, we get into some of the dry periods in the summer, or especially when we're flowering. And, and right now, uh, soybeans across the country, we're seeing flowers, pods, uh, all those things. It's very stressful to the plant. Uh, that's where we see a lot of these issues show up that really happened at planting time or shortly after. Another thing that a lot of people look at is, you know, my plants are just growing so tall anymore that it's too tall. It's simply too tall for a normal stock to support. So I need to do something to just shorten the plants. So maybe I'll spray Cobra. Okay, you can do that. You can shorten the plants a little bit with Cobra, with Harass, that'd be the, like the old pinnacle, if you remember that from 20, 25 years ago, or some people talk about Harmony out of wheat that particular chemistry. There are a lot of herbicides you can use to shorten the plant a little bit, but is that actually going to help you a lot when it comes to yield? Well, that's pretty debatable. So you can try those things on your farm, but otherwise I still come back to fertility. Okay, so when we look at the fertility thing, let's just hit the big one right off the bat, potassium. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're not putting enough potassium out there. We just aren't. Uh, in our cornfields, we're barely putting enough potassium out there. And then what's left for the soybeans? For many farmers, and you may fall into this category too, well, I'm putting up out enough of that uh, P and K on my corn crop and it's gonna be good enough to carry me through my soybean crop. Let's face it, it's not. Uh, at the Ag PhD Field Day again this year, we got comments from farmers across the country. Wow, what type of soybeans are you planting? The stalks are so thick and, and so strong. Well, we aren't planting a different type of soybeans we're using potassium fertilizer the way it needs but to be But the big used. question is how much do you actually need? And that's where we would encourage you, take a look at the charts. They're, they're available out there. Otherwise, you can download the free Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app where we've got International Plant Nutrition Institute numbers that are going to tell you based on your corn yield, your soybean yield, your wheat yield, just about any crop you can think of, plug that crop in, plug in your yield goal, and it'll tell you what you need for potassium. But the other thing is, we just want to get potassium levels overall in the soil to start with at 4% base saturation K. If you're not at at least 4%, the odds are extremely high that you're going to show potassium deficiency in that plant at some point during the year. Because don't forget, with soybeans, at the peak point, you're going to need way more than you do at the peak point for corn. That's, that's uptake per day, and that's really the big thing. You're going to need almost twice as much uh, in pounds per acre coming out of the ground and into the plants with soybeans per day that you will in corn. And 
And people think, well, how can that possibly be? I got this 10 foot tall corn plant. That's certainly going to need more potassium. Yes, it is total pounds. But look at your soybean crop. It's not really taking up a huge amount of nutrients until we get to the reproductive stages. So in a one month time period, it's got to take up a tremendous amount of nutrients. And we see this a lot in ground that is short in potassium. We can raise a decent corn crop because it's pulling a little bit of potassium up all through the season. But soybeans, it's got to pull it all out at one time. So for short, soybeans are really going to suffer. The other thing that we're seeing in terms of fertility with soybeans is guys that have taken plant tissue tests this year. We're getting calls and we have all through the season about, well, hey, my plant tissue test says I'm fine on everything in my soybeans. We say, hold on, just wait till we get to the reproductive stages, then really start doing intensive plant tissue testing to see what's going on. And now what we're hearing from those same guys is, okay, hey, I was fine on my micros, but now I'm short in things like manganese and copper. And those are absolutely critical for having a good stock. Well, once again, when it comes to lodging with soybeans, there are a lot of things you can look at, but really the base thing and the most important thing is fertility. Get your base saturation K above 4%. Take a look at your micronutrients like manganese and copper. Just get a well-balanced diet for your soybeans and you'll find your soybeans are going to respond with a better stem and overall better yield. And don't let weeds take away any of this needed nutrition from your soybean crop. We'll show you how to stop one key weed coming up later in the show.